Hi everyone, welcome back to Get A Brood. So today we're gonna to try something really new for us. So hop flavored water, hop soda, sparkling hop tea, whatever the terminology is that suits you. So if you're asking why anyone would want to make a hop tea, I guess it started in the States where um, brewers were drinking beer <laughs> during the day and they weren't as productive as they could have been. And obviously to get that hop fix, they thought we'll come up with a new solution and we'll make a hop flavored water. So um, we're experimenting with it here. There's a big development in relation to low and no alcohol. There's a lot of people now drinking kombucha and other sort of health drinks like that there. So this is, it's a way of getting good water intake with a bit of that hop flavor as well. Kuhn has brought in his soda stream machine. Now you're gonna to have to address the pH of your water, whether that be through little pH strips or one of our little um, pH meters. You need to test the water, so water, good water should be seven. Um, so the way pH works is that it's super acidity at zero and then super alkaline at 14. So water, drinking water lies normally at seven. So the approach we're taking to this is that um, most beer is enjoyed at somewhere between 4.2 to 4.5 pH. That differs obviously if you're having a, you know, a lambic or a sour beer where it could be down much lower. But on this occasion, what we're gonna do is adjust the water and then try a few different ways of getting that hop flavor infused into it. So you could make uh, green tea or black tea, add some hop pellets, whether that be, um, whether you want to put a little bit of bitterness into it or not, will depend on whether you wanna do a cold steep or a hot steep. So what we're gonna try is two jugs, one with cold water, one with boiling water, and we're gonna add some hop tea bags to both of them. We're gonna try using the soda stream machine to get an instant impact to see what way that turns out. And then we're also gonna try putting some in corny kegs and sampling it with a little bit of maturation period allowed. So in relation to the hops that you would use for this, we would suggest that you use um, low alpha acid hops. Um, so don't be going jumping straight in, going for your citrus Simcoe mosaics unless you want it to have that sort of bitterness and perhaps a level of astringency as well. So the hops that we've chosen to experiment with today are the latest 2022 crop of New Zealand Rowaka, which is an alpha 3.4%, and then obviously using uh, the Styrian Goldens 2022 at 4.1%. So we're gonna try them two different ways, one with hot steep, one with cold steep. The hot steep should get a little bit of that isomerization from the alpha acids and put a bit of bitterness into it, and the cold steep should just be all about aroma. What we're going to do is adjust the pH uh, just ever so slightly with the water. So I've got 500 mils of um, boiling water and 500 mils of cold water. So the pH in these at the moment is seven. So we're gonna use some phosphoric acid um, just to drop that. We've been running some experiments um, in relation to this and literally one drop into each is sufficient to Pop do. The one drop in there, uh, Ruwaka, the um, little five gram tea bag that we've created here, we're gonna pop that into the warm water. It's actually in process here, only with cold water, just to see um, what difference it has in the finished flavor. There is a slightly better we actually need to add a little bit more. Just checking the pH there, it's a little bit higher than I'd like. Um, maybe the hops have adjusted the pH as well, so just popping another drop of the phosphoric in and give that a little mix and we can test that again. The hot steep is actually infusion um, a lot easier. Um, obviously the, the heat from the boiling water is breaking down the hot pellets. Cold steep, we've just, we actually used the, just the base of the container there just to crush the pellets up a little bit. And visually you can tell the color's a little bit different. Real strong aroma on the hot soak there. Like it, obviously it's a lot more delicate, but it's still pleasant. So we've got um, a liter of water here in the soda stream. So we're gonna take half that liter out and replace it with this half liter and um, try it and see what it tastes like. Just realized it's actually 840 mil. Yeah, there's a real strong hop aroma. How does this work, Kian? Wow. 
definitely a lot of hop aroma in the nose. It's actually really pleasant. Yeah, you could get into that actually. Yeah. <laughs> you guys want to try? <laughs> it's, it's surprisingly good. Crossing the herbal with that bit. It's not delightful. Yeah. It's got health benefits. You need some different tips. Oh, health benefits. <laughs> Forgot it was fizzy. I quite like that. <laughs> the aroma's smashing. Mm. I like that. Mm. I think that tastes yeah. amazing. Imagine that's had a bit of time though. Like mate, say you, you let that condition for 24 hours, I think the flavour would sell. Yeah, so look, pleasantly surprised at how well that tasted, so let's check out the cold infusion and see what the difference is. So you can see visually, colours obviously a little bit lighter. Time would have an impact on this as well, so conditioning time once complete. Ah, it's totally different. Yeah, it's much nicer, in my opinion. Yeah, definitely a much more delicate aroma. Next to no bitterness in it at all. Look, general consensus so far is everybody likes um, both the hot steep and the cold steep, but three out of the four have said they like the, the cold um, better because there's more of a, a muted flavor. It's actually, for some reason, the mouthfeel felt better as well. Now there's, a number of ways that you could do this to improve it. You could add um, some botanicals and infuse that, like um, obviously elderflower or something like that there would be banging in this. Um, there's also, you could do it naturally, where you could add sugar and yeast and put it into the bottle and carbonate it naturally. The issue with that is you could probably pick up about 0.5% alcohol. Um, obviously, depending on the volume of the sugar you add, you can pick up much more of it. If you secondary ferment in a 500 ml bottle, from experience you'll know a level teaspoon of dextrose will get you a good carbonation level. That usually adds about 0.5%. So um, that's hot tea, um, making using the hot infusion, the cold infusion. I think this would be really good with green tea and then the hot tea bag in that as well. Um, but we'll experiment more with this and let you know how we get on. Styrian Goldens this time. Really pleasantly surprised at how much I liked the uh, Styrian Goldens, even though it had a very short um, steep time there. It's like floral. A really interesting way to be trying out hops as well. Not everybody's going to have a soda stream machine. Like I don't have one, but Kuhn has one, so he brought it in so we could do this today. Instant um, results from a very short um, experiment. I would imagine also that you could experiment with a water profile, so you could be using a New England water profile, you could be using a clean eel water profile. Um, for us, it was just to try it out to see what it would turn out like. Um, if you don't have a soda stream machine, most home brewers have corny kegs or some form of dispensing mechanism. If not, you can naturally carbonate in 500 ml glass bottles with a little bit of yeast and sugar. So, um, hot water, it's obviously um, it's good for you. <laughs> we can actually say for a change, it's, uh, it's a healthy option. And until next time, happy brewing and cheers.